of Mike McCallum where he can work on the inside. When I say McCallum can't be sloppy, don't get into a, an inside sloppy fight. Keep yourself at a certain distance with your jab and your straight right hand, and don't forget the jab. He likes to punch in the body, but he's got to use that jab. Mike McCallum at 40 years of age, making his way into the ring. 54 professional fights, 365 rounds as a pro. Ring officials assigned by the World Boxing Union, President John Robinson, Chairman Ed Levine, the attending supervisor tonight is Frank Brunette. Your judges at ringside are from Helena, Montana, Kevin McCarl, from Newark, New Jersey, Larry Hazard, Jr., and from New Britain, Connecticut, Steve Epstein. Your referee for this event from Windsor, Connecticut, the stupendous Steve Smoger. Introducing now the principals first in the red corner to my right, wearing the light blue trunks, white trim. He weighs 181 pounds. His professional record, 49 victories, four defeats, one draw. He has 36 wins by way of knockout. He hails from Las Vegas, Nevada. He is the former WBA junior middleweight champion of the world, the former WBA middleweight champion of the world, the WBC light heavyweight champion of the world. Introducing Mike, the body snatcher, McCallum. McCallum. His opponent in the blue corner wearing the black sequin trunks weighing 182 pounds his professional record 53 victories three defeats two draws he has 35 wins by way of knockout he hails from Ann Arbor Michigan he is the former IBF middleweight champion of the world the former IBF super middleweight champion of the world and the former WBU light heavyweight champion of the world, here is James Lights Out Tony. Tony. 12 rounds for the vacant WBU cruiserweight championship of the world. Let's take a look at the rules as governed by the WBU for tonight's championship bout. No three nine. Ten rule, no standing eight count. Fighter may not be saved by the bell in any round. Mandatory standing eight count, ten point. Must scoring system. Three judges will score the fight at ringside. Mike McCallum has five first round knockouts in his career. None in his last 24 fights. That's nine years, 11 months, and one day. Last one came in 87 against Leroy Hester. Slow, slow. James Tony has five first-round knockouts. His last came against Phil Moorfield in March of 1990. That's six years, 11 months, 22 days ago, and 42 fights ago. Mike McCallum coming right out to establish his jab. I think that's a key in this bout for both men. Both have excellent jabs. Both tend to underuse that punch. This is the heaviest that McCallum has ever fought at. He fought at 180 pounds back in 1993 in a 10-round decision in France against Razim Hassan. Tony was 183 pounds back in July in St. Charles, Missouri with a 10-round win over Charles Oliver. And uh, Tony was walking around at about 200 pounds not that long ago, so he does tend to put on some weight in between fights. That may be the understatement of the century. Common opponents for these two. Roy Jones Jr. both losing 12 round decisions. And Glenn Thomas both with 10 round wins. That's just a stumble by Tony. You know what's interesting? You have these two guys. McCallum 40 years old. James Tony with some marks on his record. And yet you look at these two in the ring and you say. I'm fascinated to see which guy can beat the other. I mean, that's the, the feeling you get about this fight. People at ringside, if you ask 10 people, I bet you get five that'll say McCallum and five that'll say Tony will win. They have ducked nobody. Mentioned McCallum has fought 11 champions, Roy Jones Jr., Jeff Harding, Tony, Sumbu Kalambe, Steve Collins, Donald Curry, Milton McCrory, Julian Jackson, to name a few. 
Tony against Roy Jones, Charles Williams, Iran Barkley, Reggie Johnson, Michael Nunn. Yeah, so they've been a hoops through a who's who of the junior middleweight, middleweight, and super middleweight. One thing that Tony's getting done early, he's getting the left hook in, and he got a right. McCallum is dropping his right hand, and Tony is finding a home for that left hook. And a point, you know, to be made is these men are heavier. They're fighting at a weight that's much bigger. Miguel Diaz made the point. But when they fought at 160, it was smaller men. They have more power now. When we saw Tony here on ESPN's Championship Boxing in August in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi, a ninth round knockout of Duran Williams when he defended his WBU light heavyweight championship, he employed the roper dope. <laughs> he did languish on the ropes a lot. He has found some intriguing ways to save energy during fights. Pretty active first round, though, especially for Tony. He has a tendency not to be that way. There's that body work from McC McCallum. He loves that. A little left hook from McCallum. We come to the end of round one, scheduled for 12. Tony McCallum, three on ESPN's Championship Boxing. And Mom Sherry watching James Lights Out Tony and Mike McCallum for the third time. Round number two is underway. You know what the sad part is? I think her scorecard is more accurate than mine. That's what worries me. And, you know, draw ni nicer, too, I might add. Good round one for Tony. Jasmine had to like that. Because she may be a little partial in her scoring. They told McCallum when he's on the inside, don't just stand in front of Tony. You got to take a step to the left or a step to the right. The way Tony fights you, if you don't take a step to your left when you throw your left hook, you'll never land it because he has a way of dipping that shoulder, and he's made many fighters look really bad uh, in that regard. McCallum has five second round knockouts in his career. Tony has seven. I think that these guys could fight 150 rounds and they would all be close. As evidenced by round one. There's a shot. McCallum with a very slight edge. I actually ended up giving the round to Tony the last round, but you see a very how close the numbers are. See, there's an example of why Mike McCallum, for instance, ends up with edge in numbers. They didn't land all those jabs, but there's a jab that got it. It was a great punch, but he jabbed to the body. He, he's constantly busy, and he makes things happen in the ring. Don't let him back in the ring. Come on. Tony. The left hook is there for Tony whenever he wants to throw it. Because Mike McCallum is really dropping his right hand a lot. Tony has a good left hook, but it's one of many punches he has that are underutilized. Final 30 seconds of round two. McCallum slapping with his punches. He has a habit of doing that. That's maybe the one chick in his armor as a fighter. He's got a good left hook, though. It's the punch that knocked Donald Curry flat when they fought his junior middleweight. But he tends to slap with it sometimes. Round number two coming to an end. This one is scheduled for 12 for the vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship on ESPN's Championship Boxing. Vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship. And Good action to start round number three. Mike McCallum, former three-time world champion, has been in with 11 champions in his career. We asked him what he's most proudest about about his illustrious boxing career. I'm just proud of my, my career overall. But mainly I'm proud of that, as you mentioned, just mentioned, I'm 40 years old, and I'm still rank uh still running around with the guys who are just young 28 years old 27 years old i think that's a good accomplishment and they're achieving by itself by now it sure is it's just amazing some people can and some people cannot 
when it comes to longevity in any sport. And I'll tell you what, it was only two years ago that he won again the WBC Light Heavyweight Championship. So he's a very consistent performer, and I, I can understand why that's what he's most proud of. Good lead shot there by Tony. See McCallum again just digging to that body. That's why he's called the body snatcher. Counter left from Tony. Take a look at the jabs. 3-2. This, this is the answer. I said it was a key. Guess what? They're dead even. So you see with these two guys, it's just so hard to choose. And, and this round is, is, is all their fights in microcosm. Tony's punches have been a little showier. McCallum has thrown and landed more in this round. I assure you, without even seeing the punch profile, that's a real nice right hand by Tony. But I assure you, McCallum is going to come back with three, four, five, six more after that. Well, when Tony does decide to get on his toes, he can make things happen. He just tends to fight very flat-footed. James Tony reminds me in a certain way of another fighter that uh, that, we, that used to box years ago, Clint Jackson, who was a great junior middleweight. Clint Jackson at times looked like he was the greatest fighter that you would ever see, and then he would have mental lapses and coast for parts of rounds or whole rounds and end up throwing fights away. Tony is like that. The right hand from Tony. Back comes McCallum. Tony just looking to use that right hand radar. There's an example of the sloppy kind of fighting that Tony will do better in than McCallum. Final 10 seconds of round three. James Tony, Mike McCallum for the vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship. Connecticut, glad you can join us on ESPN's championship boxing. Round number four underway. James lights out Tony in the black, Mike McCallum in the blue. This for the vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship. The third meeting between these two. Tony has a win, and they fought to a draw. And now very close rounds. Every single one. It has been that way in their last two fights, and it is that way in this one as well. See, I've given Tony the edge in all three, and you could easily flip those scores. Yeah, I've scored two for Tony and one for McCallum. But as our numbers will illustrate throughout the night, it is just razor close. In their first fight, McCallum threw more punches but landed just three more total punches in their second fight McCallum landed 139 more and through three rounds there's the number out Tony had a nice edge in the last round of numbers numbers thrown and that's why that edge kind of ballooned up there there's nice combinations James Tony's actually putting his punches together I say actually because it's such a rarity these days but see, look at him. Now he used to do that regularly, and he did it better than that. When he was a super middleweight, James Tony was one of the best pure boxer punchers you could ever imagine seeing, and he's gotten away from that, which is tragic. So if he can get back to it, he'll be great again. Ironically, in their second fight, Mike McCallum was he had a point deducted in the eighth round when he uh, threw a low blow. Right hand over the top from Tony. In this round, James Tony has looked like he really wants to go out and establish something against McCallum, and he's had a very good round in the fourth round. So I like to talk about when Tony was a super middleweight. You think about the great champions in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and even 70s. Guys stayed in the same weight class because there weren't three, four, five, six organizations and 700 different titles. Now you can <laughs> just keep gaining weight and moving up and there's yeah. a title to grab. You'll find some title you can win. The best weight for James Tony absolutely is 168. He might dispute that. Now he is all the way up to cruiserweight, but that was the best for him. Final seconds of round four. Scheduled for 12. Hope you're enjoying it on ESPN's Championship Boxing. 
Two-way champions, Roy Jones, Virgil Hill, Darius Mikulczewski, um, and of course Hill has two of the titles, and interestingly Hill will try to unify part of that in Germany against Mikulczewski. The reason we show you that is really that's the way class probably James Tony's going to have to try and win a title, and it's where Roy Jones is, where he claims he wants to go, and uh, those are the light heavyweight champions he can go after. That's where the money is. That is and the notoriety. And I'm going to refrain from using the catchphrase about showing us where the money is. Get out of here. Listen to McCallum cautioning Tony himself. Keep the punches up, man. <laughs> I think that's the referee's job. And by the way, Steve Smoger, one of the very best referees in boxing today. Nice right hand by McCallum. Mike McCallum has become more and more of an arm puncher as life has gone on. And that has not stood him in good stead. It's not helping him tonight. Tony working the body, McCallum to the head. The roll reversal. This is round number five. McCallum has eight fifth round knockouts in his career. Tony has six. Take a look at the numbers in round four. A good round for Tony. The last two rounds have been excellent for James Tony. He started to really establish something in this bout. I think sometimes James Tony is afraid to give an all-out effort in any given round. And I think that's mental. He knows darn well he hasn't been in great physical condition for the last couple of years. So I think in his mind, he thinks he constantly has to pace himself. And it's a shame because when he gives an all-out effort in, in a, throughout a round or in a whole fight, he's spectacular to watch. You can sense it in this fight and in this round. He fights in spurts. Callum forced to fight in spurts at the age of 40. That's a good point. <laughs> and we're, we're seeing signs of that age in the last couple of rounds, Bob. We really are. Think about McCallum. Won the WBA junior middleweight title in October of 1984. That was four years before Tony even turned professional. 15-round decision over Sean Mannion for the vacant WBA junior middleweight championship at Madison Square Garden. And to put it another way, Mike McCallum turned pro four presidential administrations ago. So he's he's been around for a while. He's that working was, on his fifth. That was on the undercard of the Hagler Ham Show 2. A little left inside, short left by Tony and a right on the top. If Tony would throw that left hook with any kind of conviction, he could make things happen. Final 10 seconds of round five. Callum getting some shots in as well. No. And brought to you by Bud Light. This Monday night, February the 24th, we started off in the Big East, Syracuse and Providence. Then number one, Kansas travels to Oklahoma to take on the Sooners. And then at midnight, Utah, led by Keith Van Horn, squares off against Rice at midnight. Big Monday, presented by Bud Light on ESPN. It's getting close to final four time now. March Madness. Looking forward to that. Still lots of college basketball action to go. I'm sure all the conference championships will be here on ESPN. And how about Dean Smith turning things around? I see McCallum in that Tar Heel blue. <laughs> and North Carolina, big win today at Maryland. All the highlights coming up, of course, after boxing on Sports Center with Carl Ravitch and Linda Combs. Tony taking it to McCallum here, trying to push him back. Now the numbers in round five. Wow, huge for uh, James Tony. He had himself quite around landing 53%. And McCallum, he's really slipping at the accuracy level you see there. McCallum has been pretty accurate in his two fights previously with Tony. For the most part, Tony has been the aggressor. That's my scorecard. I believe Tony is uh, winning this bout by three points at this juncture. There's, there's the double left hook. If James Tony would take a step to his left and just keep cranking up double left hooks, can I tell you something? He might knock Mike McCallum out. Just to dispute your card a second, I have a five-zip for Tony. There's a right hand by Tony. 
I give the count for the Browns. I thought he won the, I think it was the first or second. It's fair enough. It's the one fancy thing I rubber stamp everything you do. No, no, no. You should feel free to have an opinion of your own. Just don't express it on this show, but please feel free. You're speaking for the fan watching. Work it out. Left hand from Tony. And, you know, Tony's doing a very smart thing here, too. He's facing a 40-year-old fighter. They're in the middle of the fight, and he is ripping body shots. That will stand him in good stead. You mentioned something earlier that is apparent here. McCallum slapping a lot with his punches. McCallum still going downstairs. There's an example. That left hook McCallum just through which landed. It was really an arm punch, very much an arm punch. He does not get leverage with his left hook like he used to when he was younger. We talked about the weight as it related to Tony. You made the point that McCallum is fighting at a weight that's highest he's ever fought at. This may make him more lethargic, and maybe it has. the final 10 seconds of round six and this will mark the midway point of tonight's bout for the vacant WBU cruiserweight crown Tony McCallum three on ESPN boxing from the lovely Mohegan Sun in Uncasville Connecticut Bob Papo along with Al Bernstein we get set for the start of round number seven James Tony and 40 year old Mike McCallum so far, Tony has done a pretty good job of remaining busy, not getting lazy or lackluster in the middle parts of the round, and Al, he's really starting to take control of this fight. He is, and he's pushing Mike McCallum back. Freddie Roach, his trainer, told Tony, I want you to keep pushing him back. Make Mike McCallum go backwards, and I think in their thinking, they're looking, it's round seven, they feel McCallum's tiring. I think they think Tony can go to him and maybe get him out of there. The trainer of Mike McCallum, the personable Miguel Diaz, who was once the cut man for Tony. Yeah, and he said, you know, he said, I, I, I left Tony not on bad terms. He said, I just, Mike McCallum came out to Las Vegas, which is where Miguel is from, and he said, I wanted to work with him, and he has. And uh, he's a very animated guy, Miguel, and uh, a very good trainer. You hear Miguel Diaz saying, don't push, punch. Tends to be an important thing in boxing. You take a look at the numbers through round six. Tony, for the first time in the, all the fights they fought, throwing more punches and landing more. Beautiful hook. I tell you, those hooks are having an impact on McCallum. A double left hook from James Tony could almost be the death knell for McCallum in this fight. McCallum's been around so long, he was boxing when championship fights went 15 rounds. Yes, that's true. You know, some fighters are conditioned to be certain kind of fighters. James Tony is not the kind of guy who will walk in take a step to his left, dip down, and just crank up hooks. If he were to do that, he would win this fight more handily. But it's not his style, but he's capable of doing it. And because of that little lapse, you saw McCallum snap the head of Tony back with a combination. There's the hook again by James Tony. McCallum is looking very lethargic in these middle rounds. And he's always had a habit of pushing his punches, and he's doing it even more so, not throwing them with uh, a lot of steam. And a pretty solid performance to this point by James Tony. Solid, that's a good way to put it. Not spectacular, but solid. Round number seven coming to an end. The pace picks up. Scheduled for 12. Tony McCallum, three. Tony, 
cranking up the left hooks. Landed that one, glanced off the head of Mike McCallum, but pushed him back enough to get some things done. And I think that that hook, the one you saw glance, may be the key for Tony to really dominate this fight. Miguel Diaz in the corner of McCallum telling Mike McCallum, hey, he's tired, more tired than you are. But do something. Tony has beaten McCallum to the punch throughout the night. It's becoming more and more evident as the fight goes on. There's Freddie Roach, the trainer of Mike McCallum. That Elvis Costello look. Yeah, Freddie's been with him the last two fights. And uh, he is the man that previously trained Virgil Hill, and one of the light heavyweight champions. Also an Eddie Punch disciple, mm -hmm. who formerly trained uh, Mike McCallum, so the lineage goes on and on. In round seven, Tony landing 20 more than McCallum and throwing 30 more. Tony's been pretty dominant in these rounds consistently. To this point, this one has not had the sizzle of the first two. We'll take a look at Al's scorecard through seven. I've got Tony now with the commanding five-point lead. As I mentioned, I have it seven rounds to none. With the first two, maybe three rounds being close, but since then, it's, it's been all Tony. When you're winning rounds by 20 punches or more, you're really dominating. The left inside from McCallum. Now here's a round, this is a classic James Tony round. He's taking this round off. He might even be giving it to McCallum. He has just decided, I'm not gonna do too much in this round, and guess what, he hasn't. He's, he's aimlessly wandered through this round, no special offensive plan, just kind of waiting to see what happens. Final 10 seconds of round eight, scheduled for 12, the WBU Cruiserweight Championship on the line. It is vacant, Mike McCallum and James Tony in quest. That is the end of round eight. Let's go to the corner of James Lights Out and Tony. Keep it. Get it back, baby, get it back. is in a nasty spot on the right eye of Mike McCallum. And this is the punch that we believe caused that cut. Probably a left hook by James Tony. No, right hand, excuse me. Usually it's a left hook, but that one, yeah, and you see the blood starting. Definitely was a punch. Not a class clash of heads. Round number nine underway is Mom Sherry to the left. Girlfriend Sarah, take a look. Mom Sherry, Tony, and girlfriend Sarah in the James Tony camp. Let's see if this changes McCallum's attack at all out. That cut is in a very bad spot. And he is dabbing away at it. We know it's in a, a particularly bad spot because it's flying all over us here at ringside. <laughs> you have a good seat, but it gets messy. 
Now, of course, our view is that Tony is dominating this fight. That may or may not be the view of the judges. We would caution you that people have wondered about scoring in the Tony McCallum fights before, both ways. See, the double jabs of Tony, that's what he needs to do, walk McCallum down and throw those punches with authority. And Mike McCallum, for his part, I just don't think offensively he's getting too much done here. Midway point of round nine. question at the beginning, the question of age of Mike McCallum, conditioning for James Tony. We're getting into the rounds where the answers to those two questions will be readily available. Final minute of round nine. Tony has made so much better use of his jab in this round, both to the body and the head. McCallum has done nothing offensively. Hey, don't punch, don't punch. Come on, fight it, man. Let's go. Let him out, Mike. Let him out. Step around. Come out. Hands really up, really has guys. been the tone of this entire ninth round. It's been a McCallum retreat. I think the cut bothered him, and I think uh, Mike McCallum is not as fresh as he should be right now. And I still believe James Tony is underutilizing his left hook, which is the punch that really worked for him earlier. to the body. Round nine coming to an end. Scheduled for 12. Tony and McCallum on ESPN's Championship Boxing. Keegan's son in Huntersville, Connecticut. ESPN's Championship Boxing returns Friday, March 14th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern. Kevin Kelly against David Toledo as Kelly defends his WBU featherweight championship out. That should be a good fight. We've seen uh, David Toledo versus Kevin Kelly always in a good fight. There's the cut. They've done a very good job. Miguel Diaz, in addition to being a great trainer, is a superb cut man and often is employed for that skill. You have a fight. You know, McCallum started rubbing what they put on his cut, and he seemed to almost wipe it in his eye. We start round number 10. Tony making a very good use of his jab as he was in the last round, pushing McCallum back with that punch. Third meeting between these two. Tony won one. They had a draw in the second. Actually, Tony won the second, and it was a draw in the first. The jab is very close here. Uh, McCallum, it's the one area where McCallum has done well, but he's done so little in other areas that that's why we believe he's probably losing this fight, although, again, the judges will have the final say on that. You and I have it fairly lopsided in favor of Tony. We do, but there have been moments when judges have not totally agreed with us. Hey, look at us in the fight that we started tonight right. with, Mullings and Joseph. You and I both thought Mullings was a winner. One judge saw it 78-74 for Joseph. That was astonishing. You could have given Joseph a one-point win, but four points is pretty excessive. Especially in an eight-round fight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. McCallum going downstairs to the body a little bit. I am really, truthfully, appalled that Tony's corner has not suggested to him to take that step to the left and throw that hook. Freddie Roach is a very, very experienced corner man. And the fact that he throw that punch all night, but for reasons known only to them, they're not urging him to do it. Well, in defense of Freddie, maybe he did whisper it to Tony and we didn't hear it. He's maybe. not following. Well, possibly. when he's used it, it's worked. Oh, man. I mean, he can, he can, and when he doubles with it, it really is effective. And it started in round one. And, and on top of all of that, the man is cut on the right eye. Every time you throw a hook, it's going to land on that cut. Tony fights his way off the ropes. Back. 
match away. Ring 21 feet by 21 feet. Fairly large ring. Round 10 coming to an end. Five seconds. That is the end of round 10. We'll take it to the corner of Mike McCallum, his trainer, Miguel Diaz, who will also work on that cut. In order to get a draw, you have to at least knock him down or win these two rounds big. Other than that, we lose the fight. I can tell you plenty than that. I cannot tell you more plain than that. You have to go all the way. This is it. Oh, I see. Why take him fucking punches for nothing? You have to go. You want to go or you want to stop? Come on. Come on, man. You got to drop that hammer, baby. That's your power punch. Don't take the grease away. Come on, right there, doctor. You got to drop that hammer. Pretty ugly cut on the right eyelid of Mike McCallum. You heard Miguel Diaz say, you need a knockdown or a knockout or some big points in these last two rounds if you want to win. So Miguel Diaz sees it sort of the way you and I do. Yeah, I mean, he's giving his fighter what he believes is an objective view of this bout. And we would certainly feel, we would certainly feel that uh, like Miguel Diaz, that McCallum is far behind, but the judges may or may not be seeing it that way. Take a look at the punches in round 10. There's Tony with actually not such a big edge, so I gave him the last round. Diaz is, Diaz's assessment to, of, my, of the, where McCallum's at in this fight, I think is a pretty realistic one. But again, as I say, the judges may or may not agree with him. Counter right by McCallum after he ate a combination. Both, Go ahead, Al. No, both men landed good power shots. We're not seeing them land those good solid power shots as much as we might. Talk about these late rounds. They've both been there, done that. Go past the eighth round. Tony's been there 24 times and McCallum 20. They're very experienced. They each have one 11th round knockout in their careers. to the body from Tony. Good body work by Tony, and I think that that really stunned Mike McCallum. That was a great body shot. I don't know if Tony realizes McCallum was so shook, but I think that left hook to the body took a lot out of Mike McCallum. And again, what was it? A left hook. <laughs> And McCallum, I have to say this for him, he stayed active in terms of number of punches. Does McCallum have enough pop to hurt Tony? Well, he doesn't look like he is hurting him to me, but again, oh, nice right by McCallum. Yeah, that one landed. That caught somebody's attention. And a little left from McCallum as well. And it, every time Tony throws that hook to the body and then throws to the head, he lands and lands big with it. And the body work of Tony is effective. It's been a very interesting round here in the 11. Mike McCallum showing some life here in round 11. Is it too little, too late? Final seconds of round 11, the 12th and final round to come. Hope you're enjoying ESPN's championship boxing. Judges may or may not be seeing it the way we're seeing it. We feel James Tony is winning this bout, but what Mike McCallum does is throw lots of punches, create a lot of confusion, if you will, and uh, that was an example. I thought I actually thought McCallum won the last round. Fiery Miguel Diaz sends off Mike McCallum to James Tony. For yet another round 12. This will be 
the 36th round in this series, and they have been close. This, this bout has mirrored the other two, although in my mind, truthfully, I think this is the one that Tony has dominated more than the others. I don't know if the judges will agree with that, but that's my view. I think our numbers, which tend to be quite accurate, would support that. Almost one minute gone by in the 12th and final round. scorecard to this point is McCallum with a flurry and Tony answering. I've got Tony winning by five points right, in this bout. Right. I have again, seven. Okay, and again, I would caution you, the judges may have it closer. I don't know that, but it's possible. McCallum has never recorded a 12th round knockout, although he has one in the 13th round. Tony has one in his career. pretty good movement here to try and look for angles to punch at. One minute to go in the 12th and final round. The vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship on the line. The Callum landing a pretty good left hook there a moment or two ago. Don't forget Sports Center to follow. There is an urgency in ringside here that leads you to believe that a lot of people think this is a very close fight and that a rally here and there could still make a difference. And even if that's not our view, it might be the view of the most important people, which are the judges. All that counts. There's the left hook again from Tony and a right. And he rips a hook to the body. Give Mike McCallum credit. Say what you want. At the age of 40, for him to go through this kind of war, still make some things happen, is very special on his part. And a good job by Steve Smoker. The referee. Tony McCallum, three ends with a series of rights from each. We'll find out who the winner was for the vacant WBU Cruiserweight Championship as ESPN's Championship Boxing returns after this timeout. That how the judges tallied it up. Here's our ring announcer, Mark Biro. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a unanimous decision. Judge Steve Epstein scores it 115-113. Judge Kevin McCarl scores it 115-113. Judge Larry Hazard Jr. scores it 117-111. All to the winner and WBU Cruiserweight Champion of the World, James Lights Out Tone. James Tony, a unanimous winner on all three judges' cards. The final judge, Larry Hazard Jr., had it. What Al Bernstein had it, 117 to 111. He wins the WBU Cruiserweight Championship. Let's take a look at the final numbers. Tony, much busier, and he landed well, about 140 more punches, 160 more punches to be exact. It was more accurate. Al Bernstein is in the ring, and he will have a chance to talk with the new WBU Cruiserweight Champion. Let's send it up to Al with James Tony. All right, thank you, James Tony. Let's see if we can sneak him around here. Turn around this way, James. Get my left here. Okay, this is James Tony. Now, James, that was a fight that ended up being very close. I personally thought you won by a little bit more than two of the judges. One judge had you ahead. Were you surprised the two of the judges had it so close? First of all, I want to say hello to everybody back in Vegas, my hometown, the Fairshawn family, Chris, all the girls, Otis, everybody out there in Vegas supporting me. Love y'all. Back in Detroit. And my, and my girl, Rachel, back in New York with Mrs. Willard. Everybody back in Ann Arbor. 
Don't matter. Are we gonna go from east oh, to west in the country or what? what? Let's make it west to the west coast at least. I was four world titles, 40 weight classes. Yeah. I want everybody to know that. You know, uh, tell you it was a tough fight. Only training piece for the fight, as y'all see. But Mike McCallum, like I said, they don't make fights like us. We great warriors, you know what I'm saying? Yes, indeed. We fought, me and Mike, we fought the best fighters out there. When Mike was in his heyday back in the early 80s and 90s, nobody wanted to fight him. But I took the challenge. In order for me to get better, I gotta fight fighters better than me. And I want to thank Mike McCallum. You got me Let's started. Mike in here. Great fighter. Right, All due respect. Right. I have no, you know what I'm saying? We have some grudges outside the ring, but I have to let Mike know. It's all love, you know what I'm saying? It's business. And then personal, he's a great fighter. And I idolize him. Mike, good performance tonight. Congratulations, even in a losing effort. Thank you very much. All right. What about your future? Does this look like the last time out for you? I don't know. I got to go back and leave out of here. All right. Good, good effort. Thanks. James Tony, you now, as a cruiserweight, won this title, but you say no, that's probably not your weight class, is it? No, I'm going back down to fight like way. Everybody think, you know, Roy Jones, that because that, that BS what happened a couple months ago with um, Montel Griffin, Stephen Wonder and all that, I didn't lose that fight, but, you know, he's going to go ahead and fight the Sissy himself on March 21st, I guess. I'm going back down to light weight to fight for the title again in the next two months. You know, this is like this is a pit stop because it's gonna add a title to the collection. That's all. All right, so you want to go back down the light, heavyweight? Hey, Almost congratulations! On the, we got to run. Good all effort. Right. Let's go back to Bob at ringside. All right, Al James lights out Tony, unanimous winner over Mike McCallum to win the WBU Cruiserweight Championship. Fight from a few years back between the man known as the Tasmanian Devil.